Hi, Dr. Yas here. In this video, I am going to attempt to dispute the idea that SI joint dysfunction exists and that it in fact creates pain. It is one of the great big lies that the medical establishment has been promoting for years. And it has become so dangerous that there are now people promoting the idea of fusing the SI joint. And in fact, I'm treating an individual who had his SI joint fused and brought in the documentation he was given as to justify the validity of the SI joint fusion. And I was completely repulsed by the information provided because it was basically just lies, made up nonsense. And I wanted to give an opportunity to dispute the information in a scientific manner so that people can see that what's being said is just fallacy, meaningless nonsense. And there really is no justification or rationale that the SI joint should ever be fused. So I really wanted to discuss the information that was provided in this brochure for this fusion so that you can see that it's just meaningless nonsense. So the very first thing that it talked about was how SI joint dysfunction creates pain. And it talked about the fact that within the joint, there are free nerve endings that have the ability to identify pain. And I defy anybody to show me free nerve endings in any joint. I don't even know what that means. It, it sounds like there are hair-like projections coming from the joint surfaces that make up the joint and somehow they're just exposed and available to identify pain in the region. It's complete lunacy. I don't even know what that means. There are no nerves or new nerve endings or nerve roots or nerve anythings in joints. Joints are comprised of two joint surfaces that approximate one another with a slight space between them not in this particular case, but in most cases uh, with the space being maintained by a meniscus or a labrum. In the case of the SI joint, the space is maintained by an extremely high density of ligament to hold it in position. The reason being that all joints have a give and take between the amount of mobility of the joint that's allowed, which is the amount of range of motion versus the stability of the joint, which is the level of stability, stability that is provided to allow for force to run through the joint through joint capsule and ligament. So if you look at the SI joint, there's very, very little motion that's occurring there. Therefore, there is an extremely high density of ligament to provide stability. So it's a pretty stable joint. So basically, you have this joint between the sacral portion of the spine and the iliac portion of the pelvis, and they just approximate one another, and it's held in position by ligament. That's it. That's the joint. This idea that there are free nerve endings is just pure nonsense. It's, it's insanity. And it is just disgraceful that anyone could perpetuate such a psychotic lie to promote the idea of doing a surgery, which is just insane. So if we look at what's the purpose of the SI joint, why you have that SI joint, you simply have to understand that for function to occur, Range of motion must, must be achieved at joints and the cumulative range of motion allows the freedom of movement that is necessary for function to occur. Well, there's a certain amount of hip motion that's required. And for extreme cases of function, a lot of hip motion 
is required and there's more than that than can be achieved in the hip joint while still achieving stability so some of that excess motion was picked up at the SI joint the sacroiliac joint and so what happens is that if you try to bring your knee to your chest to achieve that you actually have to have a little bit of forward motion of the pelvis on the sacrum along with the motion of the thigh bone being brought towards the, the chest at the hip joint. So that motion, that little movement of motion at the pelvis is an accessory or ancillary assistance of motion that's necessary to get the extreme flexion needed at the hip joint. So the motion that occurs at the SI joint is ancillary, accessory to what happens at the hip joint. And, and that's its purpose. That's the primary purpose you have that joint there. It is a transition point of where your skeleton, including obviously your head, your spine, your ribs, your arms, down to the pelvis joins together, or where the spine then joins together with the pelvis, that then allows that weight of the axial skeleton to be then transferred to the legs and to the ground, right? So clearly the SI joint helps in the transmission of your body weight from your spine to the pelvis and then to the ground. But its primary purpose is to allow that little ancillary excess motion to occur to allow the end ranges of hip joint motion to occur. So there's a purpose for it. There's a reason. It's not arbitrary. And for anyone to say that the answer that you have pain in the area is to fuse the joint is to say that you're somehow impeding the end ranges of hip motion and, and explain to me how that benefits anybody. Now, I guess what they're saying is that you're having pain with motion and they're saying it's coming from the SI joint. So the answer is to fuse the joint so that you don't have pain with motion. So I guess then the confusion for me is that, are you implying that the joint was fused when I didn't have pain? And then as the joint somehow magically became unfused and had motion, I had pain. And therefore your intent is to refuse the motion, the fuse the joint back. So I don't have motion and therefore I don't have pain. It, it's so dumb. It's so illogical that anyone would suggest there's benefit in fusing the joint. Another thing that it said in this brochure is that the area of pain that the SI joint can create is anywhere in the back, anywhere in the gluteal region and anywhere down the knee, down the leg. I defy anyone to show me how a joint can elicit pain other than where? In the joint. Joints can't refer pain. Some schmuck can say it, but that doesn't make it real. There's no such thing as a joint referring pain. You have to understand this is the way the body works. You have to know how the body works to explain how the body works to understand when there's a deficit, how to identify the deficit and resolve the deficit. So the SI joint can't resolve or can't refer pain anywhere. That's just pure lie. I brought a little picture so that we can hopefully make sense of this. And here you can see the SI joint, which is right there. There's your sacrum. There's your iliac portion. And what do you magically see attaching that runs directly by the joint as it attaches from the sacrum, crosses diagonally across to the hip joint, you're seeing the piriformis muscle. So if there is pain in the gluteal region, the high probability is that it's coming from a strained piriformis muscle now, cl clearly, it passes the SI joint, so it can create pain in the SI joint region. But what I've been able to show is that I can press on its attachment point near the SI joint region, but then continue to press along the path of the piriformis and show that there's pain oftentimes all the way out to the hip joint. 
So if I could press here and create pain, you can't tell me that's from the SI joint just because you want to say it doesn't make it real, right? I'm clearly pressing on the piriformis all the way out there. Now, another thing you can notice is you notice this yellow and this point here, that's your sciatic nerve. So the sciatic nerve runs very close to the piriformis and in 30% of the population, it runs through the piriformis. So if the piriformis were to strain, it can impinge on the sciatic nerve and create pain down the leg. So if you're having symptoms running down the leg, it is much more apt, the, the back of the leg, it is much more apt to be the result of sciatica resulting from a strained piriformis muscle than somehow magically coming from the SI joint. More meaningless dog shit. Look at the freaking picture, for God's sakes. This has to make sense to you. Here's your SI joint. Here is the piriformis attaching to all five sacral spine running diagonally to the hip joint. Clearly, if this was strained, it can cause pain at its attachment point, but also along its path. It can impinge on the sciatic nerve, creating pain down the back of the leg. You have to understand, these people are in the business of getting surgeries performed. The brochure is an attempt to justify a surgery that is unjustifiable. There is no justification for fusing the SI joint. But if that's what you do for a living, then that's what you promote. I just presented a picture. I've just discussed the purpose of the SI joint. I just made it clear. So let's go forward and just one more time reinforce how we know it's not the SI joint. So as I described, the SI joint is involved in the end range motions of the hip joint. So if you're having pain in one gluteal area, let's say the right gluteal area, bring your left knee to your chest, then bring the right knee to the chest and see if there's some massive change in range of motion. If they go up about the same, then by definition, the SI joints in both sides are working properly and the same. And therefore, no one can say that there's some sort of dysfunction of the SI joint. That's bullshit. If you bring your legs in and out, same situation, the, the SI joint helps in getting that range of motion to occur. So if you bring your left foot out to the side and you bring your right foot out to the side and they go out about the same, again, there's no rationale to think there's anything wrong with the SI joint. You don't have SI joint dysfunction. If you have pain anywhere in the butt, down the leg, in the back, it isn't from the SI joint. The SI joint, if there is some sort of arthritic change, can only create pain at the SI joint. There must be a correlative change in range of motion for you to justify pain is coming from the SI joint, like any other joint. This has to be made clear. This has to stop. The planet has to be educated in a way to stop you from being easily manipulated into getting a diagnosis that has no basis. For God's sakes, you can get fusion of the SI joint for any rational reason. That is the purpose of this video, is to once and for all put, to get, put away the big lie that SI joint dysfunction has any value as a diagnosis or is responsible for pain anywhere in the lower back, gluteal region, or leg. I hope, I hope the presentation of logic, knowledge, pictorially, that this helps you understand better how to get the right diagnosis and the right treatment. If this video is helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my YouTube channel, Dr. Mitchell Yas, please subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications when new videos are added. If you want to get in touch with me, you think that what I'm saying is making sense and you want more clarification, contact me by email at drmitch at mitchellyas.com. If you've decided that you want to get the Yas method because it makes a hell of a lot more sense than anything else out there, then you can do so by scheduling a YAS method appointment by going to livewithoutpains.com, livewithoutpains.com, it's plural. 
you'll have the opportunity to schedule either an in-person visit in Jacksonville, Florida, or a Zoom session. You will get to pick and choose the day and time that works best for you. So hopefully we're reaching out there. We're getting more and more people to see there is a legitimate alternative to the existing failed system that is willing to provide big lies about diagnoses and treatments and helps you see there's a way of getting beyond your pain, regaining your function and reclaiming your life. For now, this is Dr. Mitchell Yas wishing you a pain-free, fully functional life. Bye-bye for now.